everyone, it's Christine Stitch All The Things. Today is Sunday, November 11th, and this is the first uh, segment in this week's vlog series. Uh, happy Veterans Day to all of our veterans who have served. Uh, thank you so much for your service, for your sacrifice for this country. Uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate uh, what you've given up in, in, in the service of our country. So thank you for that. Um, I, I don't normally record on Sundays. I said this a couple weeks ago. Um, I am because tomorrow uh, we're going to be picking up Callie from her dad. She had a long weekend visit with her dad um, this past weekend. And so we dropped her off on Friday. We're picking her up tomorrow. And it's a, it's a long day. It's like a nine-hour day for us. So there's no way I'm going to be recording tomorrow. Uh, because we had a travel day, I actually worked on my travel piece, Free and Brave. And I've gotten a bit done. Uh, just to remind you where I was before, I had this roof and the top white part done. And most of the windows all the way to this window almost finished. And then um, during our travels, I finished this window, the door, and then from here down, I did all the white. Uh, and so that's what I've done. And since tomorrow's a travel day, I hope that I can finish the house. That'd be great stopping point. Um, yeah, so that's, I, I got a little stitching in and very appropriate for Veterans Day weekend. I didn't plan that, just worked out that way. Uh, so I'm happy that I got some of, some patriotic stitching done this weekend. Uh, the other thing I did was I worked a bit on Peace on Earth. Uh, and my last video showed where I left off. I had this border done and the structure of this side of the house done and like the mortar lines, I'll call them the mortar lines on this side done. And so what I did was I filled in all the bricks um, and then I added the black, black roof and then filled in the door and the windows and then um, started the snow bank uh yeah Benny, i love you i love your patterns but i got worn out on snowflakes from the country cottage needleworks chart <laughs> so uh, i'm happy that the snow bank basically is like the re relief portion a reverse image of doing snowflakes i'm excited about that but these snowflakes here I'm just gonna have to tell myself, girl, put on your big girl panties and just stitch them. Um, but I am excited to get to the bird. I, my husband said, I'm really surprised you didn't start with the cardinal. And I told him, I'm saving the best part for last, honey. So I am going to stitch this and I'm gonna work up. I'll get this, the snowflakes done next. Get all the snow out of the way. I'll do peace on earth. I'll get these poinsettias done, poinsettias. And then I'll start the bird. So yeah, so that's where I got. Super happy about that. Um, I I got some stuff in the mail, but it was just stuff from making bags, y'all. Got some zippers in. I was almost out of red. I use a lot of red zippers. I was surprised I didn't have that much. Um, the other thing I got, uh, and I normally don't talk about books too much unless I've read some. Oh, okay, before I talk about this. I saw an ad on Facebook for a book called, um, I forgot what it was called. I will put the title up there. Uh, I want to say dying young, living for a di dying for a living. I think that's it. Uh, and I can't remember the author's name either. I, I don't have my Kindle in here. I just remembered. I'm so excited. Okay. I saw an ad for this book and the synopsis of the book, the ad was on Facebook said now on Amazon for 99 cents. And the synopsis was so good. I was like, I need to read that book. I didn't even go read the reviews on Amazon. I just clicked it, sent it to my Kindle. Um, when we were driving home, I actually forgot my Kindle, but I have the, the Kindle app on my phone and it got too dark to keep stitching. So I pulled up the Kindle app and I started reading this book. I read it in less than four hours. I absolutely loved it. The premise is that um, they're, they're, the world has come to a point in time where people can be dying a surrogate for death. So basically what this 
this girl does is she, uh, there are some people that have some sort of DNA or some sort of genetic markers to where they can die and then they come back to life. So um, a derogatory term for them is actually a zombie, uh, which is funny. Um, but what she does, what her job is, is there are people who, who she can replace uh, in in death, really, and so she dies for them. As they're dying, there's this process that happens, and the description's kind of cool, but she can die for them. So essentially, she sort of saves their life force from going into this like black hole death experience, and she does it for them. And then she comes back a little bit later. Now, something happens to where it looks like she tried to kill herself, with um with a, a a death experience with someone else um I, I think they call them replacements i can't remember now anyway she didn't and so she's trying to prove to her organization which is a federal organization that it wasn't her so she's got the cops on her case she's got this federal organization on her case and she discovers some pretty um intense things about her background or history um, it's a seven part series and I loved the first book so much. One, it's a completely unique concept. I mean, there's a lot of like the same sort of, um, storylines out there. This is completely unique. I mean, it, it, it's just, that's what caught my attention is there's, it's not often that you find a new kind of, um, storyline out there. And I'm probably using the wrong words, but I was really excited about this book. So I'm going to link it below because it was really, really good. Anyway, I went immediately after I was done. I bought the next two books and then the last uh, four books are were in a book set. So I bought that set because it was way cheaper than buying all the books individually. So yeah, I'm really excited about this series. I'll let you know more as I read. I normally don't read unless we're traveling um, and I have a travel day tomorrow. So if I get sick stitching or the road's kind of bad, um, I'll, I'll have that book to read. Okay. So my point in that was to talk about, um, what I got in the mail. I don't know if any of you paid attention to, or follow humans of New York on Facebook, but I was really, um, I don't even know the words. I don't even know that there are words to describe how I felt reading the Rwandan series. The very last post in Brendan's Rwandan series was on a, a director of an orphanage. Um, and I, I always say his name wrong. So let me, let me find that really quickly here. Sorry for you having to wait for me. Um, okay. Damas Gisimba. I don't know that I said that right. Uh, he was trying to save orphans, people that were coming to the orphanage for help to hide. Um, and there was a man, Carl Wilkins, uh, who was the only American who stayed behind to help him. The orphanage was trying to bribe um, or the director was trying to bribe some people, I believe, uh, unless I'm mixing up stories with food, um, to keep the people he was, um, um, hiding and his orphans safe. And then he ran out of food and then they ran out of water. Um, and Carl, according to the story I read on Humans of New York, Carl Wilkins was the only American who stayed behind and then was bringing water and then tried to get them out. I don't know the whole story, but someone mentioned that Carl, uh, on one of the Honey posts, they mentioned that he had written a book called I'm Not Leaving. Um, I found it on Amazon Used and bought it. Um, if you go to Humans of New York, scroll down to the last of the, um, and you'll find the post. Um, it's the last of the Rwandan series, and it's a seven-part series. Read that see the pictures. Um, but I cannot wait to read this book. Um, just read, read Carl's perspective on what happened there. Um, anyway, so that I, I just got that in, uh, and that's it for today. So I will check in with you on Tuesday 
I hope. Um, my craft room is a mess right now. I've got stuff to put away. So um, on Tuesday, I hope to be cleaning up in here. And then uh, I'm going to start sewing me some bags. That probably won't happen till Wednesday. And I don't think anything will go up till the weekend because the a lot of the work comes from all the interfacing and the quilting and the prepping all the parts to sew together. And then the sewing it together is the quick part. <laughs> Prepping everything's the long part. Um, so I'm excited about that. Um, thank you for your feedback. I'm going to address that more later this week. Um, you've all been very encouraging and positive. Um, and I'm going to share a bit with you my plan to keep myself on track for next year. Um, for next year. For now. <laughs> but I, I'd like to thank you all for the positive and encouraging comments. Um, because that was a real honest moment for me. And sometimes we like to hide. We like to hide the bad stuff from people. Um, it, you know, I consider you all my friends, but I sometimes I don't want to share the, the bad decisions and choices and embarrassing stuff, but I did because um, I am coming to find out I'm not the only one. So thank you for, for, for a positive response. I appreciate that. And your ideas um, to help me stay on track. Um, people are sharing what works for them. So if you're sort of in a place of, I need some ideas, maybe how to help myself um, do a little better with uh, budgeting or choices, go back and read that post or watch that my last post, um, my last video, because there were a lot of um, good, helpful ideas and thoughts. Um, so I'm going to leave it here for tonight and I'll check in with you on Tuesday. Bye. Hi everyone. Today is Tuesday, November 13th, and I'm just going to show you the stitching I did uh, yesterday while I was traveling to get Cali. Um, I did end up finishing the house here. Super excited this house is done. Um, I love stitching it, but um, it just felt like it took a little while, probably because every time I went out uh, for doctor's appointments or whatever, I didn't have a lot of time to stitch on it. So I was super happy to get the house done. Um, and then I just have the flag and some little decoration over here to do. So next trip, I'll be working on that again. Uh, the other thing I worked on a bit, and you can't hardly even tell, is the snowbank on, or maybe you can tell um on the peace on earth um i'm actually really enjoying this when i work on it at night my, my hair got stuck on the wing nut um when i work on it at night the light is shining directly on this so it wasn't until i put this up to the camera right now that i could actually see the the relief snowflakes the the reverse and that looks pretty cool i'm really happy about that um, so yeah, I don't get to see the the contrast as well. Um, so that was exciting. <laughs> um, not much to talk about other than uh, I'm going to briefly talk a bit more about my plans to help me control my spending. Uh, I said that 2019 was going to be the year that I um, I, I try to just stitch from stash. My, my goal for the year really isn't to not buy anything. My goal is to learn some self-control when it comes to patterns I see on Facebook, Instagram, floss tube or whatever, and just have a little bit more, um, cause I like everything. Like if I could have everything I would, but, but that we know that's not a reasonable thought. Well, I don't know, maybe it is, but really it's not. I mean, we really can't stitch everything in our lifetime. The designers are gonna keep coming out with great patterns. We're gonna love them all. Uh, but my purpose in 2019 is to to get debt free from, from what I've done, pay for what I already have purchased, and then exercise self-control in that I don't just buy everything that I see and think, ooh, I like that, and then buy it. Does that make sense? So I want to get a budget, stick with my budget, and see how I do. Because there are patterns and things that I know I'm going to want. So I'm, I'm not, 2019 for me is not about only stitching from stash. That's a, a goal I have right now that I'd like to do because I know I have the stash to do it. Uh, but if there's patterns or things that I want, my goal is to wait on them for a bit and make sure that after a while I really want them. 
I may have talked about this already. I can't remember. But my, my husband came up with the idea of if I see a pattern I like, write it down on a piece of paper and stick it in a bowl or a jar or whatever. And then when I get to a point where I, I have the money in my budget or, uh, well, yeah, have the money in my budget, then I can go to that bowl or jar or whatever, pull out a paper and, and buy what's on the paper or, you know, go through and pick the one that I want at that time. And I told him that 123 Stitch has actually a wish list feature that I, I sort of do that already with. I'll put, if I see it and I think, oh, I like it, I'll put it on my wish list. And then when I'm in a more reasonable <laughs> frame of mind, I go to the wish list and then I'll go look through it and go, oh, why did I put that on there? And I'll, I'll clean it out. I'll take out the things that I... I put there impulsively and then now that I go back, I'm like, no, that really, that's really not something I want. But I, I told him I really liked his idea about writing it down and putting it in a container that I can see because that's a really tangible thing that I get to see. And then it's always so fun to like write something, put it in a jar and then like pick something out later. So I, I'm not decorating my jar because as I told you, decorating is not my forte. But I put a little ribbon on it right now because it's harvest time, right? It's Thanksgiving, so it's orange. So I'm going to, um, for now, I'm just going to change the ribbons with the seasons. And then I think I may stitch something either to put on the top or around that says like stitchy wish list. And I have one paper in there. I know there is one thing that I actually need uh, to finish up a chart that I have all kitted except for the beads. Um, and it's a Christmas chart of mine. So I am, I, I'm not going to start it right now. It is something that I would like to start in 2019. But I, like I said, I'm focusing on finishes and I, I don't need the beads right away. I mean, I know I can, I have all, it's a huge chart, huge. And so when I go to stitch it, I have lots of stitching time before I even need the beads. So that's my one thing I put in there. And I'll probably be setting this jar up here. So you guys, if you see the notes filling up, then you'll know I'm writing down all the things I see. I'm enabled by a lot of you. So that's my point. That's what I'm going to be working on in 2019. It's not about not buying things. Um, I need to tell you now there's a few things I committed to buying already and purchased um, a few things that are are not on their way yet. Uh, flosses are back ordered for one chart. Um, and then there's a few that, uh, you know, some of the cross stitch shops, when you buy them, the, it's not in stock right away. So I'm waiting for a couple things to ship. So you will see some things come in. Those are just the remnants of what I bought, but I am going to check in and let you know, honestly, how I'm doing. If I fall off the proverbial um, instant gratification wagon, then I'm going to tell you that and say, nope, well, I wanted to do better, but I didn't and I messed up and I'm human and we all know that. Um, but not only am I going to be accountable to my husband on the money side, I'm not always going to share that with you, um, but I am going to be accountable on how I am doing on the side of did I did I just see something and just say, screw it, I, I want that, I'm going to get it, or did I exercise a little patience and wait a bit? Uh, so if any of you are struggling with this and you'd like to check in with me or anyone else, let me know. Um, I'm not going to make it like an official thing other than officially share on FlossTube my intentions for 2019. My every year, uh, not every year, a lot of the years people will come up with my word for 2019 or the word for the year. I already know right now it's self-control. Uh, I usually get to New Year's Eve and I'm like, oh, what clever word can I come up? Nope, I know it. It's self-control. Um, that doesn't mean um, um, I, I forget the word right now, but keeping things like not buying anything, like totally just not getting anything, but it means a little bit more self-control. Um, so as far as what I've signed up for subscriptions, I got rid of all my floss and my fabric subscriptions. I have none of that. The only subscriptions I'm keeping are two. One is the Songbird series uh, from Cottage Garden Samplings. I get that through Trish of 3L Threads. I love those charts so much. Uh, there has not been one chart that's come in that I thought, mm, I really didn't like. I love them all. So I'm going to keep that. That's $10 a month. The other thing is the... Um, uh, silver, 
Silver Needle, Circle of Friends. I just showed the falling chart from that club. That's that's um, an every other month thing. It's six, six different um, kits that come. I've gotten two out of the six. I'm going to keep that. Um, and it's like between 45 and 50 every two months. So that means I, I know there's a big thing coming. Like, a, I just got one. So I know I've got like a month or so before the next charge hits. So I need to get sewing. Um, and then the other thing I did was I signed up for, I did this, uh, when it came out a week or two ago was the stitchy box pirate mini box. I think it was, I forget what they call it. But I was like, uh, yeah, I need that in my life. I don't need that in my life. But I'm going to have it now. So I put down a $20 deposit. And I think I'm going to owe like 60 or something around July. So I'm writing all this down so I know when these charges will hit. And that those are the things I'm purchasing. And that's it for now. So like I said, 2019, it's not about not buying anything. It's about self-control. And my thing right here, my, my wish list jar. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Come up with a stitchy thing to put around that. That's a stitchy wish list. It's not high on my priority list of stitching to do. I'll find a spot for it up there. But you guys will get to see it if it fills up or if I not or whatever. Um, so that's it. I will check in with you maybe tomorrow. Um, I wanted to get to sewing this week. That was my intention. I said it in the last video. I may not. Um, I forgot. I say these things and I always forget that there is stuff coming up that I have to do. One Thanksgiving, I have to go Thanksgiving food shopping. Uh, Brad and I have eye doctor appointments. I have a dentist appointment. Um, today I had to bake cookies to send to Josh because he's not coming home for Thanksgiving. Uh, he's doing great, by the way. He's just not coming home, so I wanted to send him a package. So I got the cookies baked and the frosting piped on, but I've got to let it set overnight. Mail that out tomorrow. My husband switched date night to tomorrow, so tomorrow's like early day and go out to the movies. We're going to see Overlord. Cannot wait. Um... And so things just kept cropping up. I really, though, I'm really hoping, because I said in the last video, I wanted to get a bag or two up. I'm really hoping to get at least one or two up. I don't want to let anybody down or, like, go back against what I said. So fingers crossed. You'll know, because this video will be up Sunday. And if I did it, I did it. And if I didn't make it, I didn't make it. And then have to hope I can get some in before Thanksgiving. I'm kind of disappointed because I know that nobody's going to really want harvest bags after Thanksgiving's over. We're all focused on Christmas. And I just bought some great harvest fabrics. But that's okay. I'll have them for next year. And then sometimes we're not always working on harvest things only in like September and October and November, right? Maybe? I don't know. We'll see. I just take it as it comes. Um... I think I'd already started to say, I'll see you tomorrow, and then just went off. Anyway, um, I will check in with you tomorrow. Bye. Hi, guys. It's Thursday, November 15th, and a super quick video, I promise. Uh, today, just to show my progress on what I've done on the Cottage Garden Samplings Peace on Earth. I finished that snowbank. I actually really enjoyed stitching that snowbank. I, I was really hesitant because of all the snow I stitched on Santa's village that I was just like, oh, just get it done. But I actually really enjoyed it because I love seeing the snowflakes in there and how it turned out. And I was super careful with my counting on that, by the way, like triple checking because I'm so bad with counting. And I probably even have a mistake in there, but I'm not going to look too hard to find it. Um, and then I started working on the poinsettias, which I love, love, love those. You can see a little bit of my harvest lights in the background. So yeah, um, I want to finish this poinsettia tonight. I was going to start working on the snowflakes up, but I'm a lazy stitcher as far as I don't like to count, have to count long distances. So I know I said I wanted to get all the snowflakes up first. I didn't bring in the pattern to show you, but I'll have it, um, over here so you'll know what I'm talking about. I'll scooch more this way. Okay, um, but up here I'm going to put in the piece on earth 
first because there's huge snowflakes right here that are easier to count from the piece on earth wording over to start them than it would be to count the little snowflakes like I think there's one in here and then count up so um, yeah after I finish this poinsettia I will probably come up here to do peace on earth and then I can do the snowflakes up and then I'll do the the cardinal in the corner uh, so that's my stitching plan now one thing I forgot to mention with my wish jar um, when I, I was talking to Brad about this, when I write what I want on the papers in here, I'm also, oh, I won't show you the paper. There's only one paper in here still. I haven't seen anything else. I'm like, oh, I have to have that. Um, but I'm also writing where to get it from because Brad said if he wanted any ideas um, to get gifts or whatever, he can just come to my jar and pull out a paper and then know where to get it. So yeah, stitchy wish list and gift list jar uh so yeah ideas if you guys like that idea and then want to tell your your significant others or kids or whatever like hey you want to get me a gift go pull out a paper in that jar you you'll know where to get it it's already done so yeah okay so that's it for today i am finally gonna get to sewing all my stuff is done for the week have my dentist appointment today so dentist appointment done uh, and that's it. So I am um, I have to clean my craft room first and Then I'm gonna get sewing. I'm super excited. I haven't been this excited in quite some time about getting stuff sewn um So yeah, I'm gonna get to that. Hope you guys have been having a great week and I will check in with you tomorrow. Bye Hi everyone. Today is November 16th. It's Friday. Happy Friday. I'm wearing red. Remember everyone deployed I have my military mom cap the only thing I have to show is the progress I made last night on Peace on Earth. I got pretty far. I finished the um, poinsettias. I'm trying to make sure I don't hold this too funky. Um, I finished this white one here. And then I started on the Peace on Earth up here. Um, I got to, sorry, everything's, I'm, I'm a little unstable today. I'm not sure why. Um, I got to stitching on the P and um, we have put on how to get away with murder. So I knew I had time at least to finish that P and start with the E. And then my husband pulled out some Cheez-Its and that was the end of my stitching. So yeah, never going to say no to Cheez-Its. Never. Um, so yeah, I'm going to keep on working on this. Hopefully I'll finish that piece here and then I can start on the snowflakes. Um... And I'm looking forward to getting to the, the cardinal in the corner. I will say I have a feeling I'm going to be done with this by next week. And then I can uh, start on the, or continue working on Tis the Season by Blackbird Designs. I may have two Christmas pieces finished before Christmas if I just focus like this. I'm really excited about that. Um, I don't, I don't think there's anything else doing really, really good with, um, not being tempted by anything to buy right now. I think it's probably more because my focus is on you can't buy right now. So I'm not actually looking. I've not added anything to my jar still. Um, so that's really good. And like I said before, um, I don't know why I'm saying um so much today. Probably no more than usual. Uh, let's see. Uh, I know what I, where I was going with that. There's a lot of really helpful comments on the last video. I'm going to link that last video below. Uh, if you're struggling, if you need ideas to help with a little bit of um, self-control or how to uh, veer yourself off of a dangerous path, if you're not wanting to buy. Now, please don't take any of this as criticism for people who want to buy what they want to buy. Go for it. Um, I just have acknowledged that right now this is a problem for me. Uh, and like I've re I'm going to reiterate this probably too much. If I want to buy something, I will buy it. But I want to make sure that I'm really buying it and not just going in with a, everybody else has that. I need it too. Uh, there, I think I know there's a difference. Uh, and so that's where I am. And if you're struggling and, and you're sort of wanting a, a place to encouragement to to not spend you struggle with it too please message me you can message me on instagram you can message me on facebook 
Um, you can message me. My, my, all my links are always below. Um, except for Facebook. If you, I'm Christine Slaughter on Facebook. You can find me there. Um, and my email is in the description box. My Instagram is in the description box. But if you're, if you're just having a moment and you just need someone to talk to, to, to be like, you know, help me, help me get over this moment. I really want to spend and I, and I don't want to, uh, message me. Uh, and, and I, I know I have several people that I can message. They haven't said message me, but I know I've got people I can message and just say, Hey, get me through this moment. But I've got some great ideas from other people in the last comment. And I'm going to, uh, you'll probably hear me talk about this a bit. Um, how I resisted something a particular week because it is an issue for me. So if I do something that helps me get over that momentary, um, I need this right now, I'll share that with you. Um, and if, if you're tired of hearing this, um, I'm sorry, there's tons of other videos that share lots of haul, have no shame in spending, and I encourage you to go find those and stick with those people. But for this upcoming, for a while, my focus is really going to, to be on self-control, and that's going to be my theme, um, And because that's just where I am at this point in my life. Um, so just disclaimer, I may mention it a little bit in every video. Not every video is going to be 100% about um, talking about this stuff, but the last video in this one pretty much is because this is a new part of my journey in trying to gain a little bit more control over my spending. Um, so, and it helps me. And that's the purpose of these videos, right? They're my videos. I have to find what works for me and what helps me. And what I've discovered is there are quite a few people who feel a bit the same way. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I will check in with you tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be the last uh, segment in this vlog series, uh, this vlog week. I always try to say that so smoothly and then sometimes my brain's like, that didn't sound right and I mess it up. I'm sure if I'd have just kept going, it'd have been perfect. Um, this was just a one whip week this week. Yeah, I didn't work on anything else, but I'm, I'm trying to focus on getting some, some of these finished, some of these whips finished. Um, Amy of Amy DeVille. Hi, Amy. Um, she asks a question, like a daily prompt question every day in the Stitcher's Coven group. The questions are fantastic. If you're not part of that group, I would encourage you to go. Um, it's so much fun in there, uh, just getting to know people based on these questions. And her question yesterday or the day before was how many whips do you have? Uh, I, I am in awe of some of the people. Um, and how many whips they had. I went and counted mine and I was like, oh my gosh, I have so many. I have 12. I thought that was a lot when I counted. No, no, I admire you guys. You know who you are and the number of whips that you have. It's just astounding and I'm really in awe of that. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for you because that's just like with as many whips as some of those ladies and gents have, I just... Um, yeah, how fun would it be just to go dive into your whips and be like, I want to work on this one today. Uh, anyway, exciting stuff. And yeah, I love the daily questions. Today was where's your favorite place? Uh, oh my gosh, I've been talking for like nine minutes. <sighs> today was just supposed to be quick. Um, and I, I couldn't think of a favorite place. Um, I've been to the Winchester Mystery House. That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. Um, but like favorite places? Yeah, I... I really struggle with the question because uh, I haven't done a lot of traveling in my life. And pretty much the favorite places that came to mind are places that I've been to with Brad in Oregon, um, Depot Bay, Silver Creek Falls, uh, Bush's Pasture Park. Um, and then I just realized it's where I've been with Brad. Wherever Brad is, that's my favorite place. Um, he would probably get a little misty eyed if he heard me say that. He's so romantical but he would not deny that, but he is that man. But yeah, right now it's just wherever he is. Uh, but we've got some traveling to do once the kids get on and going with their life. And so when we start our travels, um, I, w I bet I'll end up with a favorite place somewhere in the world. And I'm excited to see what that is. Okay. Enough jabber for today. Hope you guys are having a great weekend and I will check in with you tomorrow.
Bye. Today is Saturday, November 17th, and the water heater just kicked on in my hobby room as I hit record. My timing is impeccable this week. Um, I just want to wrap up this week's vlog series and show a little bit of the stitching I did yesterday. Uh, Kelly and I had an appointment, so I worked on, oops, you know me, always ready. Um, I worked on the, the flag pole on Free and Brave and then started the flag at the top, but didn't get very far with that. And that is this chart right here. So it was nice to have about 30 minutes yesterday and get a little stitching done. I actually think it was less than that. Now last night I worked on Peace on Earth and you will be blown away by how far I got because I was. I finished the piece and then I finished all of the snowflakes. I could not believe I got all those snowflakes done. Um, my husband and I put on a like a two hour movie and neither one of us enjoyed it. So we ended up just focusing on what we were doing because we multitask when we're watching movies sometimes. Um, if the movie's not particularly good as this one, we, we just didn't like it. It wasn't great. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you the title because uh, it doesn't matter. Um, I thought maybe I would just get piece done and then like these three snowflakes, but I got those done and I just, I really enjoyed it. Now you guys know I'm always complaining about the snowflakes. I have been complaining about stitching snowflakes since way back when on Santa's Village. And so I probably mentioned it 25,000 times in this video before today because I was dreading working on these and I was just like, just do it. Just get them done and over with so you can get to your favorite part, the cardinal that goes right here. But I really enjoyed stitching these. And I, last night I was thinking about why it, I always dreaded it on the other one. And it's because when I stitched the snowflakes on Santa's Village, I used one strand of Petite Treasure Braid and one strand of white floss, just cotton floss. And the two didn't stitch well together. I mean, it was, uh, they were fiddly. The Petite Treasure Braid liked to knot up on the back and I wouldn't notice it. Um, and then trying to anchor them when you're doing snowflakes was just a little difficult. And so it was always just such a fiddly process. Uh, but I didn't have that issue here at all because I just I was using just one strand of white cotton floss um so they just went so much easier so that was fantastic I uh, I'm gonna start working on the the cardinal in this corner there's a branch it sits on I'm gonna start that tonight um and maybe I'll get to that cardinal tonight I don't know we'll see I definitely foresee uh stitching on tis the season by Thanksgiving so I'm super excited about that uh, and then that'll be my focus piece until it's done. And I don't, I don't think I have a huge amount left on that. I have s some of the, no, I think I finished the bird. I just have the border. I'll show you next week because I don't remember. Okay, really quick before I go, I want to show you my two favorite things this week. Right now, utterly smooth. Um, when the temperatures, when the season changes, season changes to winter <laughs> in Arizona we don't have winter we watch everyone else have winter and I enjoy it immensely because I do not like snow I actually posted something like that on my Facebook and like I had 10 people say I love the snow and I'm like that's awesome good for you you can go ahead and enjoy my portion of snow too I don't like the snow I don't like cold I would much rather complain and be hot than cold to the bone because that's miserable feeling to me if you enjoy snow I do not take that away from you. I hope you enjoy every minute of that snow. That's not my thing. That's not my jam, as Elena B. would say. I love you, Elena B. I saw you had a new video up, and I haven't had time to watch it, but I'm going to go watch it today. Um, okay, back to the lotion. When the seasons change here from summer to winter, it, it gets really, really dry. You think summer would be the dry months, but no, really winter is. Um, so this stuff is fantastic. I get it at the Dollar Tree for a buck. Uh, and I always have three. I have one in my purse, one in my um, stitchy like car bag, the to-go, this bag. And then one by my stitchy spot. Um, and this is what I use, <coughs> excuse me, uh, because it's not greasy. So I just put it on my hands, I let it dry, and then I start stitching. It does not transfer to my stitching at all. It's amazing. The other thing is um, my lips get really, really, really chapped. So I love this Burt's Bees. 
Uh, this one, I have all sorts of different kinds of Burt's Bees lip balm, um, but this ultra conditioning one, uh, where'd it go? I had this focused earlier. This is the second time I've done this video because, um, anyway, it doesn't matter. This, it, it's just good. I uh, just lip balm. If there's a lip balm around, I, I tend to gravitate towards Burt Bees, but I, I need it because yeah you, in the winter you need to drink a lot of water and when it cools down here people tend to not drink as much because you're not hot it's not when you walk outside you're not thirsty from the heat but really winter you really need to drink a lot so if you come to arizona in the winter uh, to the desert parts of arizona excuse me overexcited today i uh, drink a lot of water because i'm telling you this climate just sucks the moisture right out of your skin okay so those are my two favorite things for today i don't have anything else to talk about um i'm gonna get sewing i really hope to get some at least one or two bags up by tonight i did all the prep work i'm just ready to sew now um and i i just want to get to it so um i hope you guys are having a great sunday um i will wish you an early happy thanksgiving if you're in the u.s uh, because my next video won't be up until after Thanksgiving. So um, I am thankful, by the way, for all of you, uh, for all of your encouragement, all of your encouraging comments. I haven't gotten to them yet. It's been a really busy week, um, and I'll talk about that in another week or so, What, why this week was kind of crazy for me, and I didn't get stuff done like I hoped. Um, but I, I just want you guys to know that I am very thankful for you, for those who of you who watch my videos for those of you who leave comments um if you have time to leave comments if you just if you just watch it if you like it uh and click the little like button all of those things i am thankful for i'm thankful for this community um i appreciate all of you uh and i'm just gonna leave it at that thankful for you all have a great weekend and i will check in with you next week talk to you later bye oh don't forget stitch all the things I almost forgot. How do I forget my own tagline? All right, stitch all the things. Bye. Bye.